Hello everyone! In this video we'll derive stretching vibrations for diboron tetrachloride. This video is divided into three parts. In the last part we'll have a quick look at research papers which investigated this problem. Okay, so first let's realize that diboron tetrachloride has D2D symmetry. I'm sure you know that. I made for you more than 100 flashcards to practice molecular symmetry, so we are good, okay? Next let's decide on the orientation of axis. I recommend to you this website with character tables because they are well made. For instance, for D2D, the character table clearly states that the z-axis has to contain the boron-boron bond. Some tables are not so clear about it, and you have to figure it out by just looking at the entries of the table. The position of y and x-axis does not matter that much in this particular case, so let's pick that y-axis is up and x-axis is sticking out of your screen. Now let's label the bonds and let's notice that we have two different set of bonds, BB and BCL. Now let's determine reducible representation for each set of bonds. Please remember that only the bonds that are not moved by the symmetry operations contribute to the characters of matrices that we are interested in. Let's start with the boron-boron bond. Obviously, it transforms into itself under every operation in the group, simply because it is the only bond of its kind. Therefore, we immediately see that the boron-boron bond is described by A1 fully symmetric representation. Now let's tackle the BCL bonds. Obviously, none of these bonds are altered by the identity operation. Now let's think about improper rotations S4. Please recall that S4 is a composite operation made of C4 rotation here along the z-axis, followed by reflection in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Obviously, all the BCL bonds change place, so the character is zero. If you cannot quite see what S4 improper rotation does, please watch my video on improper rotations, where I explain it using animations. Then we have C to Z. Of course, all the BCL bonds move. Then we have two C to prime. If you cannot see these symmetry operations, please visit this website and notice that aline has almost identical structure as diboron tetrachloride. And of course, it has the same symmetry, D to D. The only structural difference is that instead of BB single bond, Aline has two double CC bonds. From the model, we can see that two C2 prime are in between the planes of reflections. Let's leave only one C2 prime and let's animate. We can see that two ends of the molecule swap. That is, all four BCL bonds will move. We expect that because C2's prime are, after all, perpendicular to the BB bond, so they have to flip the ends of the molecule. The last symmetry operations are planes of reflection, and of course, regardless of what plane of reflection we pick, there will always be two BCL bonds that does not move. Now let's break down the representation for the four BCL bonds. I have already showed you how to do that in one of my previous videos. So anyhow, we get these ereps. A quick note about Raman and IR activities. Raman active vibrations are the ones that belong to the same representation as one of these functions, or the linear combinations. IR active vibrations are the ones that belong to the same representation as one of the x, y, or z functions. So we see that all stretching vibrations will be Raman active, and B2 and E will be IR active as well. Now let's think how these EREPs look like. The A1 stretch of boron-boron bond is obvious. It's simply a symmetric stretch. For the four BCL bonds, we need to construct symmetry-adapted linear combinations of the basis vectors, that is, the vectors that we placed along the bonds. We will use the method of projection operations. Basically, what we need to do is to pick one bond, I picked R1, and perform all the symmetry operations on it. So under E operation, R1 stays R1. Now let's think what R1 goes into under S41. S41 is made up of C41 rotation along the z-axis, followed by reflection in the y-x plane. Let's say that the rotation is towards us. R1 stands up and then gets reflected and becomes R4. S42 is just S41 done twice, so again, rotation by 90 degrees and reflection takes us to R2. And if you watched my video on symmetry operations, you know that S42 in fact reduces to C2. 
Lastly, for S43, we need to do S41 one more time, and so the bond goes down and is reflected and it becomes R3. So under the two S4 operations, R1 becomes R4 and R3. Under C2 it's easy, R1 goes to R2 and then C2 prime. We will leave it for last. So let's do sigmas now. Sigmas in yz plane takes r1 into r2 and sigma in xz plane leaves r1 unchanged. Now let's return to c2's prime. If you wish, you can go back to the website that I told you about and examine the animations more closely, but I will show you a trick. In this case we don't need any 3D models. We simply need to think for a moment. I'm sure you know how the A1 stretch of BCL bonds will look like, without the need of doing any calculations. It will be fully symmetric. All four BCL bonds are stretching outwards. We have eight symmetry operations in D2D, that means the unnormalized symmetry adapted linear combinations for A1 will be equal to this. Knowing that, what do we need under C2 prime? Well, R4 and R3. We don't need to know exactly which C2 prime transforms the R1 into R3 or R4. Why? Well, because our next step is to take this line and to multiply it by the corresponding entries by the EREFs that describe the BCL bond stretching. Let's multiply it by B2 as an example. We multiply R1 by plus 1, R3 and R4 by minus 1, and we get minus R3 and minus R4, and then we need to multiply R2 by plus 1, then R4 and R3 by minus 1 again, and R1, R2 by plus 1, and we get 2R1 plus 2R2 minus 2R3 minus 2R4. If we multiply the line that I'm showing you in a blue box, component-wise, by a1 irrep, and a1 irrep has plus 1 under every entry, we get 2r1 plus 2r2 plus 2r3 plus 2r4, as I already told you we would. For e irrep, we get 2r1 minus 2r2. Now, for the e representation, we need to construct two symmetry adapted linear combinations because e irrep is two dimensional. First thing that you always need to try in these cases is to use a different set of bonds. So now let's take r3 and let's see what it is transforming into under symmetry operations. Please notice that we only need to focus on e and c2 operations as only these entries are non zero in the e. E -rep. So if we multiply this line by e irrep, we get 2r3 minus 2r4. Next, let's tidy these vectors. First, we need to get rid of common factors. In this case, every vector has a common factor of 2. Then let's normalize the vectors to the length of 1. Let's take a look at the first vector. Notice that there is a coefficient 1 in front of r1, r2, etc. So the length of this vector is 2. It's simply a square root of the dot product of the vector with itself. Therefore, we need to divide each term of the vector by 2. Let's do that for every vector. Now let's draw the stretching vibrations. Our starting point is the A1 fully symmetric stretch that we already talked about. All four BCL bonds are stretching outwards. In other EREPs we have some terms that are negative, for instance for B2 we have minus R3 minus R4, and that means we need to reverse the direction of the vectors R3 and R4 with respect to the direction R3 and R4 have in A1 representation. According to these rules, the E stretches will look like that. Now let's compare our results with research papers. Okay, so this table is from this publication. This paper uses theory to predict vibrational bands. However, it compares the predictions with experimental data from another publication. This is always a good thing. Theory without a support from an experiment is essentially speculation. First thing to notice is that we have 12 vibrational modes for B2CL4. They are also called normal modes or fundamental vibrations or just fundamentals. The table does show 12 normal modes. Bear in mind that e irrep always describe two vibrations of the same energy. Just a quick side note, the boron-boron torsional vibration that is only Raman active was never observed in the cited literature. The frequency of 25 was outside of the instrument range and moreover no combination bands were observed that would confirm the torsion at 25. What is a combination band? 
If two fundamentals are found at VI and VJ, then the binary combination will be found at about VI plus VJ. So this entry in the table seems to be a bit of a wishful thinking. Of course, there might exist a publication that did record the torsional frequency, but it is not the one that is cited. So be aware, it is actually quite common with research papers that you go to the cited paper and you might get slightly disappointed with what you find. I'm not going to comment on how satisfactory the correspondence between the theoretical predictions and experimental data is. For us, the bottom line is that all active fundamentals have been found and there is no ambiguity in matching the theoretical data with the experimental data. So these are the pictures of the vibrations from the theoretical study, and these are just the stretching vibrations and our predictions. Please bear in mind that the projection operation method that we used is very simplistic, it only captivates the essence, that is, the symmetry of the vibrations. The vibrations from the publication were derived using a software package which uses more advanced methods of getting vibrational modes. So that's all I have for you today. I hope it helps. Thank you for watching. Bye!